Hey there everyone, we got a lot more information about extra work to the point that we know somewhat everything about it and I will try to sum it up to you all but first a short explanation. You probably know by now that I'm not a big fan of data mining that reveals future unreleased content for multiple reasons and I avoid it if possible. But in this case, we will be talking about lots of data mine information that was shared on social media and the reason is that everything about extra work is technically known to many, but it is supposed to be a competition at the same time. So if this isn't spread to everyone, I'd say that would be pretty much unfair as a whole and ruins a large part of an already short and limited time event. So at this point, I think talking about it is the right thing to do. With that said then, a final warning that we'll talk spoilers about extra work and reveal how you can prepare for it. So thanks to multiple data miners, we now know pretty much everything about the upcoming extra work next week, including how the difficulty waves will work, weapon selections, and also what the five waves are going to be, and certain details about them. First, let's talk about the difficulty, as I think this is the best part about the event and what makes it a very accessible and fun event for everyone. What's cool about extra work is that the difficulty will be scaling according to your performance and instead of overwhelming players who aren't ready for top scores, it will allow different teams to tackle different difficulties that work for them. By default, for example, wave 1 is going to be 60% hazard level wave for everyone, no matter what. This is the hazard level for overachiever players as an example, with a quota of only 11 to 14 to fulfill. The idea behind extra work is that Grisco wants you to overwork and overfish, and you will be rewarded for reaching milestones above the required quota, namely for 50% more or twice the amount required. It works differently for different team sizes, but since 4-man team is the standard, we'll talk about that. If you exceed the required quota by 50% and gather that much more golden eggs, then the hazard level of wave 2 will be increased by 30% compared to wave 1 and will be a hazard level 90%. On the other hand, if you gather twice as many eggs as the quota asks of you, then you will increase the hazard level of wave 2 by 60% in comparison, and wave 2 will be a hazard level 120%. So as you can see, the difficulty will be dynamically scaling based on how well you overfish and will challenge you according to your performance and planning. If everything goes perfectly, then the maximum hazard level for each wave would be 60%, 120%, 180%, 240%, and finally 300%, which is already around EVP 700 in ranking difficulty. At start, it will be relatively easy to meet these requirements, and as the hazard goes up, it will get a lot harder, especially with the waves we'll be getting. For weapon selection, there isn't a lot to talk about, but just to confirm how it will work, it's pretty much going to be like private jobs in Salmon Run, so players will be able to choose which weapons they want to play with at the start, and they'll have the same weapons for all 5 waves without changing. These weapons will be from a pool of 4 weapons they've given us, so Splat Roller, Blaster, Splatter Shot or Splat Charger, and since a lot of people asked, no, there cannot be duplicates, so there has to be only one of each weapon. Additionally, the specials for the teams will also be fixed, and the ones we can use will be the Booyah Bomb, Crap Tank, Inkjet, and Killer Veil. This is all going to be the same for everyone, and the specials will be locked to the same players depending on the slot they joined in the lobby. Now let's talk about the waves, since they also revealed on what they'll be. And I'll use maximum hazard level, so remember, if you don't reach 150% or double the quotas, these will be significantly easier for you, and you don't have to worry. Wave 1, so hazard level 60, is going to be a low tide normal wave with apparently big shots in it. This wave will be relatively simple, with a maximum of around 8 bosses spawning, I believe, and you'll be pretty much expected to collect every single egg and perfect this wave to increase the difficulty for wave 2, but it shouldn't be too much trouble. Wave 2, on the other hand, if everything went well, will be 120 hazard and normal tied griller wave. This will be the first division between players as maximizing a griller wave will require good team coordination and knowing the proper strategies for it as well. You will only need to gather around 36 eggs here for the double quota, so that's very doable for everyone. But since there is no boss limit here, this wave will already be one of the main parts of the competition as you can easily go up to 50 or 55 eggs on this wave with a good team. Wave 3 in best case scenario will be hazard 180% and it's a high tide. 
quota should be around 24 golden eggs, so for maximum difficulty increase, you'll have to gather 48 golden eggs, and since it's high tide, it will be possible to get around 55 or even 60 golden eggs here too, depending on how many bosses will spawn. So the competition continues. Wave 4 will be already hazard 240% with a quota of around 27 eggs and will be possibly the trickiest wave for most as it's going to be a Goldie Seeking wave. The reason I say trickiest is because Goldie Seeking is one of the most technical waves to perfect, despite the fact that we'll be able to memorize where the Goldies are, because you'll need to use multiple tricks and techs to split Goldies perfectly and close to the basket to maximize your Golden X score, and in my opinion this wave will be the determining wave for most players. Finally, wave 5 will be then hazard 300% on a normal tight sockeye station, with big shots apparently. Quota will be around 31 or so, and this will be by far the hardest wave to maximize, as not only is normal sockeye station very challenging to overfish on, but you'll have to go through the previous 5 waves perfectly each time you fail, which will be around 10 minutes or so, so practicing wave 5 will be incredibly time consuming. The quota here will be 31 as I said, more than 30 bosses can also spawn during this wave, which means theoretically you can collect 90 eggs on this wave alone if you fully master it to its maximum potential, which is going to be extremely difficult. Now if we combine all the waves and calculate the final golden egg score for top teams, then the likely golden egg score results will be around 300 golden eggs more or less for a top level team. But things can change if Nintendo decided to alter the rules around the boss spawns and golden eggs, so we'll just have to see about that. As I said, the biggest problem is going to be time. Since it's a 2 days limited time event, each attempt to practice will be longer than 10 minutes, and depending on how much you can play, you will have very limited attempts at perfecting the final waves. And so my advice here is to make sure you record all your attempts and properly make notes on what's happening so you can research and plan. Overall, the waves are actually super fun in my opinion, and I'm really happy they included Griller waves, for example, as I think extra work can be a really nice event to force the player base to go through somewhat of a tutorial of some sort to finally learn how to tackle these waves, since you will have to learn them if you want to have a good score during extra work. So let's hope we'll also get Glowfly Rush waves in the future on all maps too. Now to lighten the topic a little bit, of course extra work will be a competition and for the very top it's going to be quite serious. But it's also still a very fun little event for everyone if you decide to not take it too seriously. And personally, with all this data mining about it, I don't even think it's worth taking it way too seriously. It's a good opportunity to see how well you can plan ahead and work together with friends and others in a stable environment without any random elements in it like usual, and if you're into that kind of activities I think extra work will be a lot of fun. With that said I do aim to prepare you all as best as I can next week before this will start, so expect a griller wave guide, a goldie seeking guide and also some general wave guides for sockeye station that should help you know what you need to practice or look out for before extra work starts. But it is pretty much everything I believe we know about extra work for now, so if you listen to all of this, you can pretty much start preparing and practicing for it in scenarios with your team. Thank you for listening to this short update everyone, hope you're looking forward to this event, and I'll see you all in the guides next week then.